My name is Kate from Cosmic and what I want to talk to you today about is e-marketing. To give you some hints, some tips, some ideas and maybe some inspiration of ways in which you could use e-marketing in your business and ways you could plan for the future as well. The first subject I want to touch on is optimization, search engine optimization. This is about finding those customers that don't know you. This is about, not about if somebody types in your brand name into Google and you appearing. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is people who don't know you but want your service or your product. Why is this important? Well, still now, organic searching is the number one driver to websites. Check it out yourself as well. Have a look in your Google Analytics and actually see for you what your number one driver is. But for most businesses, it's still organic. What I want you to start thinking about first is getting the basics right for your organic campaign. And what I mean by that is some basic understanding of organic optimization. The first piece I want you to think about is actually understanding that every page on your website is an opportunity for Google to find you. And optimization of that page is really tidying it up. It's about looking at that page and helping Google to see what that page is really about. So only having about two or three keyword phrases for that page and including that in the content. So the text that's on the page needs to contain the two or three phrases that you want it to have. And not just in the text, in little paragraph titles, in the page title, in the images. So instead of an image being called dcs821.jpg, it should be your keyword phrase.jpg. Think also about the footer of your website. It's a real opportunity in your footer to put some of those keyword phrases in. There's also a piece above the website that people don't see, and it's called the meta area. And in that meta area, the one important one to think about is your meta page title. That's the piece that Google looks at first to say, what's this page about? So in there really needs to contain your two or three keyword phrases first. So if you do that to a page, what happens to Google when they index that page is Google looks at it, sees the page title, says, right, I know what this page is about, and then goes through the rest of the text on that page and the images and everything else and says, I really know what this page is about. So by getting those basics right, what you're doing is creating the foundation for Google to index your site well. And as I say, that's only just a quick start to those basics of optimization, but I hope that helps you to start thinking about the content on your site. The other two areas that are worth thinking about within Google is actually the links back to your site. It's what we call backlinks. And think about ways in which you can increase or you can get more links from other people's sites to you. It might be that you sign up to directories. It might be that you become a member of an organization. It might be that actually you ask some of your friends or colleagues to have other links on their sites to you. But getting those links back to you helps Google to see your site as being valued. And the third piece around optimization is about updates. Google likes to see your site being updated. In fact, in some ways, Google sees that as the fact that you love your site. So it's worth Google really looking at it. And it means if you update your site regularly, Google will come back sooner to update its index too. So those little hints I've just given you there are really the basic areas of search engine optimization. But to me, there's no point going higher up that pyramid until you've done those basics. And you can do those yourself. The bit you may need some help in is thinking about what those keyword phrases are. But there are tools out there that can help you to do that. The second thing I want to talk about is content. And I've touched on it in the first area. But I want you to think about content. 
And what I mean by content is photographs, video, and editorial. That's the content. And the concept is that if you get that content right, and if you think about content first, you can then use it across all your channels. So you can use that content in your social networks, but you can also use it on your website, for your e-newsletter, and actually even as press releases or information out to the press too. So if you think about content first, rather than oh my God, I've got to put something on Facebook today, what is it going to be? Instead of thinking like that, think how am I going to get content out first and then how can I distribute that amongst the channels? So content first strategy is what I want to get across there. I also want you to start thinking about the content you've got on your website. On an average website, on a very small website, people have five or ten pages. How many pages do you have on your website? It's a very easy thing to do. If you go into Google and in the Google box type in site colon and then your domain name, you'll see how many pages Google has indexed for your site. Have a look at yours, have a look at competitors. Because some people will have hundreds and thousands of pages on their website. The one I've shown you here has 300,000 pages indexed in Google for a simple e-commerce website. So your challenge is to think about how much more content can you create for your website? Because the more pages you have, the more spider food is there for Google, the more opportunities Google has to find your website. So think about creating that content. And again, think about then sharing that across the channels. You can create content that is not just about your products. You could create content that's much wider than that. You could create content that helps people to make a decision about their buying. How do I organize a wedding? How do I choose the right care home? Whatever that thought is, you could create content on it. You've probably also got lots of content around your office that could be repurposed for the web. You might have a how-to guide or a servicing guide or a manual now all of that information could be repurposed for the web just by rewriting it in slightly different ways. Think also about the use of video. Video is increasingly important, not just for people because we love video. I'd much rather watch a video than I would read, read text on a website. So not just for that, but also from the search engine point of view because it indexes video in the same way as it indexes everything else. So think about ways in which you can create video. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be professionally done. It can be just done with a smartphone, a tripod, and then upload into YouTube. And the YouTube app now actually allows you to edit, to cut, to add music, all of those sorts of things in there as well. Obviously, if you can afford it, get it done professionally. But think about ways in which video could help you to maybe describe your products better. You could use it for customer testimonials. You could use it for your chief exec to be describing the brand values of your business. All of those sorts of things you could create video for. Because one of the important things about video is it creates an emotional connection. Sony Xperia have used this really well, not just for sales, but for support as well. So they've created a YouTube channel solving every single problem you might have with their phone. So what they've managed to do is get to a point where um, people who have a problem with their phone will Google it, the video will turn up because of the organic searching, they'll click on the video and they can solve their problem themselves. Can you do that for your business too? Think about images. Photographs are incredibly valuable, really valuable resource, again, because they create that emotional connection and they tell us so much more about the business than words. The photo I'm showing you here is a photograph from a care home. And to me, this photograph is saying that this lady is really well cared for. She has a sun hat on, she's got activities that she's doing, she's got gloves on to protect herself, and she's smiling, 
And that tells me so much more than a web page that just says we're a caring home. So think about ways in which photographs could be used in your business. And also ways in which you can share that. Pinterest is one of the fastest growing networks at the moment. But the audience in Pinterest is majority female. 80% of Pinterest users are female. So if that's your audience, think about ways in which you could use Pinterest. And Pinterest can be used across the business. You could pull together themes in Pinterest that you don't have on your website. Or even you could get together with other businesses in the area and create Pinterest boards that are more related to wider aspects of your business as well. The third area I want us to talk about is e-news. I know it feels like it's an old strategy, e-news, but the statistics are still telling us that it has the highest conversion rate of any e-marketing tool. Some businesses are using it to the, at the center of their e-marketing strategy. And one of the reasons they're doing that is because it's really measurable. In so many of the softwares in MailChimp, in Constant Contact and in eSender and other softwares that are available for e-newsletters, we have full reporting capability. We can see who opened the emails, what they did from that email, and then also if we drop that into our analytics code, we can see then what they did throughout our website. So it's one of the only areas in e-marketing that we have a real true tool that we can analyze the return on the investment that we make. Many of the e-market e-newsletters now have a free subscription rate. I think with MailChimp at the moment, I think it's 12,000 e-newsletters you can send out for free. So many of them you can try and play with and see if you like them or not. But one of the pieces of advice I would give you is be regular with your newsletters. Are you going to do them once a quarter, once a month, once a week? Whatever you decide is right for your customers, make sure you continue to do that. And then inside the newsletter, don't make it too complicated. The approach that Apple take is they only have three or four stories. Usually they have something that's helpful, something that's about the business, and something salesy. It's the rule of thirds. Think about that for your newsletter. Because one of the things that, ha that helps people to see is that actually when they open your e-newsletter, they're not going to have to spend hours looking at it. It's something that's quick and instantaneous. So think about ways in which e-newsletters could work well for you. If you have lots of different audiences, you can segment your e-newsletter really easily. Think about looking at the return on the investment for e-newsletters too. Don't forget to link back to your website because what we're trying to do, use e-newsletters for is generating links back to our website. The fourth area I want to talk to you about is AdWords or PPC, pay per click. And this is something that I think is really important to us because it helps us. I don't think it should be the central part of our strategy, but I think it's the area which we can use for instant success. AdWords is brilliant for today. It's brilliant if we've got a new product that's come out or we're launching a new website with a new domain name. We know that often it takes three, four months for Google to pick up a new website. So AdWords is a way to get instant now hits. So if you've got a new product, try it on AdWords first before the organic search takes, takes place. Also, if you've got something that's seasonal, think about using AdWords for the season. Or if you've got something that you need a quick fill, maybe you run a bed and breakfast or a, um, a holiday cottage, AdWords is really useful for that last minute thing. So think about ways in which AdWords can actually backfill other parts of your strategy. What is AdWords? It's the bit that sits across the top and down the side of Google. It's the bit that's slightly beige and often says sponsored links. In mobile, it now just appears at the top of the screen. And what we do with AdWords is we bid. We create a campaign, we create an advert, and we say, I want that advert to appear 
only when somebody types in these words. And you can have a whole string of words that trigger the advert. And we pay only when the advert is clicked on. So we pay a fee that we've agreed, that we've bid on, when the advert's clicked, not when it's shown, not on the impressions. You can keep control of the charge. You're only charged when, when your advert is clicked on and you can put in a monthly or a daily cap for the bidding process. So when you reach that cap, your advert is no longer shown. So the costs don't have to escalate for you. The tip I would give you around AdWords is just be careful around the match types. When you type in or when you decide your trigger phrases, those phrases that will trigger the advert, just be careful that you don't make too many broad decisions. And on the uh, slide here, hopefully it helps to explain this. If, in my experience, the best option is to create a phrase for each one of the uh, trigger phrases. That all that means is putting two little apostrophes around every word that you put in or every phrase that you put in. So just think about that because that really does help you to get better click-through rate. The other tip I would give you in AdWords is fail fast, fail early. Use it, try it, see if you like it, stop the campaign if you don't. You are in control of AdWords, so do start it and stop it when you feel you're ready. The other tip I'd give you is don't always go for number one position. It's not always the best position. You will find this yourself, that when you look through Google, often you scroll to the bottom of the page of the organic results. If you don't find what you're looking for there, you tend to look over to the right-hand side at the adverts there. So position five, six, or even seven or eight might be relevant for you. That can help you to save costs. So do look at the campaign settings in AdWords. Do start to understand what suits your business and keep an eye on the costs. The fifth area I want to talk about is about listening. This is about understanding that people out there might be talking about you and you aren't aware of it. So creating a listening part to your e-marketing strategy is really valuable. We can use products like Google Alerts, which helps us to send us an email anytime anyone creates any information on the web that relates to the search term that we've put into Google Alerts. That might be your own name, it might be your brand name, it might be directors or trustees of your business's names. All of those things you can put into Google Alerts and you can be told about. So if someone talks about your business in a positive way or in a negative way on a blog, on a forum, on a website, anything, you will get an alert to find out. That's really useful because that really helps you to manage your reputation online. We can also look at that stuff in social media as well. We can use products like Hootsuite or TweetDeck. And within those, we can set up mentions or searches that allow us to see any tweet or any conversation that contains the phrases we're interested in. So reputation management, I think, is an important part of a strategy. The other thing we can do with listening is actually listening for, for cues, for things that we can get involved with. And we can do that again in social media. Within Hootsuite particularly, we can set up a search that may be as on a phrase like journal request. Journal request is a, a phrase that journalists use throughout the country whenever they want a case study. And if we then see those requests, we can respond to one. One of our clients, for example, was listening out for journo request and, the, and a tweet came through saying, does anyone know anyone who works in a shed? She responded by saying, yes, I work in a shed and it was country living. And last Christmas, she got four pages in country living for free, advertising and talking about her business. So listening for these cues can be really beneficial to your business. The sixth area I want to talk about 
is measuring the success. I talked a little bit about this in e-newsletters, but this is about understanding what actually works for your business and what doesn't. And we can do this in lots of different ways. We can use Google Analytics to see how people are coming to our website. We can see what they're typing in to Google to get to us. So that can help us to understand if those keyword phrases that we talked about right at the beginning, if those keyword phrases work for us. We can also use Google Analytics to see what they've done once they're on our site. So the behavior they have on our site. Are they getting through to the contact page? Are they actually finishing their basket transactions? What are they doing? How long are they staying on pages? What page did they arrive to the site on? Are our landing pages working? All of that stuff we can find out from Google Analytics. Also now in Analytics, there's an area of social media. So we can see from what channel people have come to the site and what pages have they gone to. So all of that stuff we can find out from our free tool, Analytics. We can also use other tools. There's a tool called Clout. And Clout, I think, is a really intelligent way of us measuring ourselves in the world of social media. And what it's doing is starting to analyse how influential we are online. It's not saying, how often do you tweet, and therefore, you're popular. What it's saying is, if you tweet, who retweets you, and how influential are they? It's saying in LinkedIn, what is your job title, and who are you connected to? So it's starting to give you a measure about your influence online. And the clever thing about this is you can also compare yourself to competitors. So you could maybe, you maybe have a clout score of say 50, and your competitor might have a clout score of 70. And you can see from that, that actually you've got a lot of work to do to create more market share online for your business. So there are lots of other tools out there that we can use that can help us to be successful in social media and in our e-marketing strategy. But those are two that I hope will help you. So all in all, I want you to think about your e-marketing, what you're doing currently as a business, and maybe using some of those tips, some of the hints, some ideas to expand your e-marketing and to measure the success of what you're doing.